that here. I got third or fourth graders, maybe first or second graders. Do they want to know every plant? Are they going to know every plant? Are they going to remember? Do they care? No. So don't tell them everything you know. And for heaven's sake, don't stand here while the next person is still trying to teach up there or has come and replaced you at the table. So you want to get them away again. Number one, they're really going to like to move along. They're going to like to hike. So you can't really people with their legs, feet on the ground and their butt on the... I don't say, I want everybody's butt on the bench. No, I go, I like the way she's sitting. Make sure that you, every the table is clear. Their water's next to them. Don't let them have their coats off and then there. You know, if you're day captain or if you think about it, if you want to bring a blanket when it's really cold, because they'll be antsy. Some of them will have worn shorts and they'll be cold to sit down. You know, so sometimes when I'm day captain, I bring all, some old military blankets and put them on the, the um, benches. So on a cold day, you might want to do your nature hike first, because then the benches I've have a chance up. to warm up. Okay, <laughs> so <laughs> I've gotten them away from here. Now I'm going to tell them, okay, I'm first, you're next, the parents are last. We're going to stay close together. When I stop, you're going to gather around us. So I practice, let's everybody get in our line. And notice who's in front of you and in back of you. I've been in front for a while. That's, that's okay. No, we don't have that. I'm moving with that. No. So uh, notice who's in front of you. And then, and I'm going to give them the spiel about, okay, when we stop two times, or I'll say now it's your time to go to the back, or she might tap you on the shoulder, what, however you want to deal with your kids. But you want to keep a tight group. Okay, now I'm going to take you, and as soon as I stop, you're going to gather around me. But I like to give them Every the time broad... we see tracks, we may not see the critter because he will have disappeared. We were already making vibrations, and I would have showed them how to walk. If I haven't, like I just remembered now, I will show them. Well, what do we think that might have been? They have no clue. You maybe have no clue. But we see evidence of a critter. So what do you think that could be? Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, so we have our rabbit tracks. And the reason I circled it is because other naturalists might be just busy with something else. They might not see it. So whenever you see a print, you're going to circle it for the next people. But I will have only put stuff in that's dealing with today. So I have that sign that said nice, and I wear wherever it, it is. It was on right the there. inside on your right side. Okay, so remember that I word that we that. learned, and they have this at the t the they have this at the table, and I will make sure that everything I'm teaching for that day is in the the front pockets. Because man, if I put everything I have, and I don't have to use a single thing of my own, I've taught at the table. They've already seen this, but let's say I'm taking the nature hike first. I'm going to teach them the word nice and they get a visual of it. So some kids learn different ways orally. Some te people were, learn from seeing something. So I'm going to say, what kind of rock is that? We already talked. It's black and white, so it. How do you like this rock? That's nice. nice. Whenever I point to a rock that's nice, I want you to say, that's, that's nice. nice. How do you like this rock? That's, that's nice. nice. OK, so then we'll walk over, and I'll give them another little trial. And I'll point out, let's, I'll, I'll walk a little bit to get a move in. And I'll point out this way. How do you like this rock? We don't say anything because it isn't nice. It's a beautiful rock on its own right, but... And then, when you're looking around, and I want you to do this today, I want, when, by the end of our walk, I want everybody to have a piece of quartz in their hand and a piece of feldspar. So when you see it, stick it in your pocket, not mine. Um, and the, this is where I hit a bunch of rocks. And I don't know what they all did with it, but um, here's where I could point out, okay, this rock is a little bit bigger than this rock, but what's the main difference between these two rocks? They're about a similar color, and it's sort of a good idea to pick up something that's similar size, so let me get a little bit uh, rounded. One has the edges. This rock has edges. Why does this rock, how did it lose its edges? It was tumbled. Okay, so it was tumbled. And they're both wilderness granite. And so if I look, I should be able to find some granites. For sure, I can yeah, see, I see um, feldspar, quartz, yeah, mica, yeah, and some little dots that are the garnets. But I am not going to see it in the oracle granite. 
So if you're going to find some nice garnets to give an example, praying mantis egg casing. And here's where you get your, your magnifying glass out and you can show them that this zipper is open. And you can use, you know, anthropomorphistic things for little kids. So I see the zipper's open. So critters have come out of it. And they're the nymphs of the praying mantis. But there's also some holes in the side. You can mention that or not. If it's first and second graders, I probably don't mention it. But I show them the zipper. And if they don't know what insect it is, I go, it's an insect. Here's your hint that does this. On the count of three, name that insect. One, two, three. Praying, praying mantis.